Now finally, we have the last idea in object orientation and objects themselves, emplore encapsulation. So you could think of encapsulation as a container that puts things together, groups certain pieces of data together, for example, that is an object and it's encapsulating that information. So we can think of encapsulation as keeping things together, but that's not the only thing that encapsulation offers. Encapsulation has another idea behind it. It is also what's called black boxing. So what do I mean by that? Well, by black boxing, it means you just give the standard input and output. And you don't really want to know about the inner workings of the object as long as it works. For example, your television. Your television has lots of inputs that you can put into it, such as HDMI signals and so forth. And you have standard buttons that you can press and it will output certain information. Now, you're not bothered about how that television goes about fetching signals and doing all the rest of it. All you care about is pushing a button and that button performs an action. As long as it performs that action, you don't care how it works. In fact, you could take the guts out of your television, have it completely replaced, and as long as those buttons still do the same thing and it still receives the same input, you're not interested in anything to do with the actual technical side of it. Well, in that retrospect, we do the same in object-oriented programming. Now, you may be going, why on earth do we want to hide stuff from our own selves? We're the programmers. We should be able to access everything within the object. Well, there is a very, very good reason why you don't want to just allow any part of your program to access any certain other part of your program. Let's take a use case scenario. We have users with bank accounts. Now, a bank account has a balance. Do we want any part of our program to just modify the balance? Well, maybe not. Let's say that every time the user deposits money or withdraws money that affects the balance of that account, we want to keep an audit, a record of all of the deposits and withdrawals on that account. In this case, we use black boxing. What we do is we prevent other parts of our application directly affecting the balance. That way, it will stop our application bypassing the auditing on that account. Because if you could just directly change that value, then how does your program know how to create a log and audit that transaction and audit that change? It doesn't. So what we do is we hide the balance property. It can't be affected directly. Our programs have to go through the withdraw and deposit methods. And when we go through the withdraw and deposit methods, it will change the balance, but it will also insert a record into our audit. So that is why black boxing is important for us as programmers. We actually know how our objects work, but what we want to do is make sure that data is accessed correctly so that you can't just randomly change certain aspects of your program without going through a certain chain, a certain process before that change can be made to that object.